we have our very being, God. We can't make it without you, God. We can't even um, have a good day, God, without you. Um, we have to keep our minds stayed on you, God, and uh, if we want to have peace, God. And we thank you for that peace, oh God. We thank you for the things that you provide for us, God. Um, we thank you for your word this morning, God. I pray, God, that you will bless our pastors, God, and that you will continue to bless their families, God, and um, that they will have peace in their homes, God. I pray that you will bless them financially, physically, mentally, spiritually, in every way, oh God, that they will be able to continue to do your will, God. I thank you for all the men in Great Ap um, Oak City Church, God. I thank you for all of those that are here listening this morning that took time out to get up this morning, uh, thinking about you and what it is that you have to say. Thank you for all things. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Yeah. Um, I have a scripture. I'll read. It's from Psalms uh, 63. Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsts for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy long loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearers of his word. This is the 63rd of our Psalms, 1 through verse 4. Thank you. At this time, we're going to ask, does anyone have a song? Uh, I would like to make a request on that song. I'd like to hear Blessed Assurance, more Blessed Assurance, that we heard last Sunday from Sister Haley. She's prepared. Amen. Sister Haley. <laughs> Blessed Assurance. <laughs> Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. River of salvation, oh, of God. Lord of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. All the day long. Amen. Amen. Yeah. The uh, I think the, the the main place that 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 I at least got to as far as conviction in that chapter was how deeply Paul uh, was praying for the the the, the believers in Coloss. I mean, it, it was just really um, amazing all the all the depth in which he was praying for these believers. Um, because he heard about their faith and how, how they loved the Lord. So um, we, 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 uh, we spent a lot of time discussing um, how we ought to pray for all men everywhere, but particularly for those, uh, for, for those who are, you know, in this battle with us. So spent a lot of time there. And that, that was that was pretty much what we went over. Y'all hear me? Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, testimonies. We will go right to Elder Darrell, Pastor Darrell. Last Sunday, um, <laughs> but today I did get a uh, uh, something I was out running this morning, and I had this song pop in my head that I haven't heard in years, and we yeah. sing it all the time. You sing it all the time. And it kind of uh, fits uh, Hebrews 13 and 9, at least the second part, because the writer is really, uh, you know, he's finished all the doctrinal part in the first 12 chapters we talked about. And 
now when we get to the 13th chapter, it's really some final words of encouragement that he's actually given to the believers on how to run their race. And in 13.9, um, what he's saying, he's trying to get them to the point where they're established. Uh, you the second sentence. This is a good thing for the heart to be established with grace and that's what we meet. So basically everything he's trying to do is try to get them on stable ground and make sure they stay on stable ground. And the song that popped in my head while I was running was, uh, we used to sing it a long time ago when I was a kid. It was like, uh, so many falling away, Lord help me to stand. <clears throat> and uh, it was, um, didn't quite understand the song when I was a kid, but the real point of the song was really just trying to get to a point where you can stand even if others are falling away. Uh, but what the writer is doing is writing in such a way that he wants everyone else uh, to be able to stand as well. And so the challenge for us is to uh, live this gospel in a way that not only will we be secure and, and steady on stable ground, but those around us will be as well. So I want to go to the uh, share my screen now. Uh, go to the lesson. <clears throat> All right, so I'll put a little subject up there. So many falling away, Lord, help me to stand. So uh, when we go to this first sentence, as we finish the sentence, the whole point is trying to get to the second sentence in Hebrews 13, 9, and that is to be established. And we, we'll have a lot of fun with the second sentence as well. Um, so we jump right into where we left off last Sunday. Uh, but we're going to start with a um, well, introduction. Uh, only thing I'd like to point out from the introduction, hope you've read it, is that the, uh, in, in any war, any kind of battle, uh, it's good to know the strategy of the enemy that helps us along the way. And in this particular case, in uh, Hebrews 13, the writer kind of uh, eludes or uh, points us to one of the Satan, the uh, tactics that he used uh, against us and just exposes us. To, uh, exposes him to us so we can now we can know how to uh, overcome that and defeat that and that's one and we talked a little bit about it last Sunday is that how he tried to get us to this FUD thing the fear uncertainty and doubt um, and try to get us to, to question things of where we are um, and and I sent out a little uh, <laughs> did anyone see the video the little YouTube clip I was going to try to show it today but hopefully everyone just saw it and get a point from that. So let's read our uh, text again, all together, please. Remember them which have obeyed concerning the end of their conversation. Occupied hey, I think we're a little further out of sync this time, but I think we all read the, read the same passage, but, <laughs> and, and it's still great. <clears throat> and again, like we said before, the the key part of this uh, section is still uh, verse eight, and that's that's the anchor point. <clears throat> and I actually call it the anchor tenant, or whatever, like we say. But it's all hinges upon Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And based upon the history of chapter seven, verse seven, we get to the future in verse eight, by how we could actually not be carried away with the verse and strange doctrine, and then actually get to the point where we can be established, our heart will be established with grace. And that's the whole point of these uh, verses seven, eight, and nine. And actually the next few verses actually point to the same thing about how we should be established with grace. All right, so here's where we were last time. We talked about the words. I went and added the other, a words in bold, um, uh, for hopefully we'll start those next time, uh, about being established, grace, profit, and occupied, uh, the second part. But the, the whole idea is to get them to this point where 
they are established, you know, to be made firm and to have them settle and, and stand on solid ground. And it's the way they get there. And the way they can get there is a grace. And one of the things that uh, promotes us or actually helps them get to that point is not to be cared about with diverse uh, and strange doctrine that we talked about last time. So let's uh, quickly go through what we talked about last time and then that's gonna help us uh, finish uh, the, at least the first sentence of, uh, of verse nine. So last time when we went through this, uh, we, we talked about carried about, um, and the Greek, it just means in doubt and hesitation, you always got this doubt going on. And that's one of the things that when we talked about FUD before, it was fear, uncertainty, and doubt. So it was just a way that the devil used to attack us uh, with some kind of fear, some kind of uncertainty, make you uncertain about things, and Paul alludes to that. He talks about the way the certain is the serpent, the Galilee. And as if you read the Genesis account, they came in the same way: the fear, uncertainty, the doubt. Pick one of those things, and that's how he tried to get us off track. But the writer to Hebrews tells us how we could not actually fall prey to that. And so last time we talked about uh, the just to, just so no campaign. Yeah, you can't just tell people to not do something unless you have. Uh, some foundation that they could stand upon, some way you could support them. They prepare it now. Now you could tell them to just say no. Uh, in this point, in Hebrews 13 and 9, he says, don't be carried away with diverse and strange doctrine. This weird stuff, this new stuff that's coming about, don't fall prey to it. Don't move on to that. Don't move from where you are. And he can say that so confidently because they've already been taught. These people have been taught things. Uh, even in verse 7, it says, uh, the Emily leaders who taught us the word of God. You've already been taught the word of God. So there's no excuse for you to follow every little thing now. And for us today, we've been taught the word of God. It's not just, you know, stuff to make us feel good all the time. This is the actual unadulterated word of God that we go through uh, here and you may go to other places, but if anyone is a Bible teaching place, then you've been taught the word of God. So if you've been really taught the word of God and not something to just make you feel good, then you have no excuse to go chase after this new stuff to come along that's not even real and you think it's just something neat and cool or, or popular. So the writer is very clear. And so that's why that song made so much sense to me. You know, so many fall away, Lord help me to stand. Well, God has already helped you to stand by giving you the word of God. So other people may do that. And the only reason people will do that is because they haven't really been taught or actually haven't digested the word of God. But if you have the word of God in you, you won't fall prey to all this new and diverse stuff coming along. And there's a lot of it coming along. And we haven't even seen the real start of it. It's, it's gonna go <laughs> harder and heavier, but it's more important now than ever that we stay solidly grounded in the word of God. And, and with so many things going on in the world, it's very easy to lose sight of God's word and chase other things going on in society. That's a lot of ills in society. There will always be ills in society. And it's not our job or duty to go chase those down and try to resolve those issues. Our job is to continue to feed ourselves uh, on the word of God, a regular steady diet uh, of the word of God. Uh, and other things come along, but it's not the main thing. Um, we talked about uh, last Sunday, Acts 17, and I read that again, uh, <laughs> I read it again for the first time, uh, you know, after the lesson last Sunday. And, and one thing that I didn't notice before is that they were calling what Paul was preaching strange and new doctrine. I mean, so he came along with a strange new doctrine, but this gospel that he preaches is not strange and it's not new. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So when it came down to it, when they say, tell us about your new and strange doctrine, you know, what are you doing? You, you talking about resurrection and things like that. That's exactly what Paul did. But the thing that we like, that I like most about last Sunday when we talked about Acts 17 is that Paul noticed a whole lot of false gods that they were ignorantly worshiping and worshiping something called the unknown God. And instead of Paul talking about what's wrong with this one and what's wrong with this one and why that one won't work and why this one will fail you, he didn't even address those guys. All he did was talk about the one that they didn't know about called the unknown God and said, hey, you know, you got one called the unknown God. That's the one I want to talk to you about. One, I don't see one if you're called Jesus Christ. That's the one I want to talk to you about. I don't want to see the one about who went to Calvary and died. For you. I, that's the one I want to talk to you about. So our response should be just like that. I don't want to talk to you about why you 
religion is jacked up and why this doesn't work and why there's so many fallacies, fallacies and pit holes in what you believe. All I want to do is present one thing, and that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's our job. So we don't have to refute things and have these philosophical discussions with people about what's wrong with what you believe. All we have to do is continue to preach and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ, that grace. That's what we do. And so what Paul did in Acts 17 was exactly the model that we're to follow. So I can't get an argument with you. Not that I don't respect you. I just don't want to argue with you about that. All I want to do is tell you the gospel message, period, and keep it moving. I got other people to talk to and get the gospel out. So we shouldn't spend a lot of our time debating with people. Just preach the gospel and move on. That somebody's going to listen. So our job is to get it, plant the seed, and keep going. And that's what Paul did in Acts 17. And then uh, and this is what I talked about last, last Sunday. I'm kind of doing this quick review. Uh, we talked about for the fear, uncertainty, and doubt, uh, exactly the way uh, you know, Satan uses uh, to get us off track, <clears throat> to get us off a of stable ground. And we talked about moving off a of solid ground and moving something you think may be more solid, but it's not. Uh, and that's exactly what happens. Look at um, look at Second Peter uh, three on the left side, and uh, <clears throat> look what that says in verse sixteen. And this is Peter, and Peter is is in sync with Paul. So Peter is talking about what Paul had wrote in his epistles, and he says, as also in all his epistles, talking about Paul, he says, speaking in them of these things, he says, in which are some things hard to be understood which they that are unlearned and unstable wrestle with. So we got a lot of unlearned people out here, unstable people, they wrestle with these things, they, as they do also the other scriptures. You see people using the Bible and, and basically perverting it. And you know the truth, all our job is to present the truth and keep going uh, until their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, yeah, be, you also being led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness. So right now, Peter's saying you're already in a steadfast, stable state. Don't fool around with these people. <laughs> they don't know, they, they're unlearned, they're unstable, and you could be led away with them as well. But he gave us this, um, the answer to the problem, the cure for the illness. Verse 18, he says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Okay, so now uh, our solution here is to grow in grace and in the knowledge, and I, uh, I put a little emphasis on of, just not growing in knowledge. It's the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because what happens, what, the, what, what Satan does is try to attack us uh, with this fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And, and, it's, and it's, it's the, uh, the way he does it is the same way, uh, like I was saying, I work for this company and I got the commercials here, if y'all have seen it. Uh, and it's basically trying to attack people from that same angle, which is the same way Satan does it. So look at, um, did everyone see that? You come off me for a second. Did everyone look at that uh, YouTube commercial? Did anyone not see it? I saw it. Okay, great. Anyone not see it? I didn't see it. I didn't what I, either. What I was going to try to do, I don't know how well it would do if I try to show it on Zoom. Uh, let me just see if I can. Uh, and if I don't, watch it afterwards. Uh, can y'all still see my screen? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Can you see the YouTube screen? Not yet. Uh, what about now? No. Nope. Not yet. Okay, hold up then. Let me try something else then. Uh, Bless you. Uh, so, Uncle Daryl, you can um, exit screen sharing uh -huh. and then share again, and you can choose which tab to share. Okay, okay, so try it. Oh, thank you, thank you, uh, mm -hmm. CTO. Let's see here. So I'm gonna right. share screen, <laughs> and then oh, okay. Wait a minute. Okay, now. All right. Can y'all see it now? Yes. yes. All right. Cool. Thank you. So let's see if it plays well. <clears throat> now, this is a uh, this is what I used when I was at Cox, <clears throat> and Cox had an inferior service to Verizon. Okay, Verizon was just superior to 
Verizon had fiber optics and Cox had copper. Okay. And so this is how, and it really worked a lot because a lot of people left what was, <laughs> what was superior for what was really at that time inferior. Okay. And so here's one of the ways that that was accomplished. So you're thinking about getting Verizon TV service. You bet. Well, did you know they often use expensive cancellation fees to lock you into a long-term contract? Seriously? Man, makes me wonder what else I don't know. Do you know you're supposed to work out your lower body, too? Okay, did everybody see the commercial? <clears throat> yes. Okay, all right. Yes. All right, so, uh, so what's good for you? <laughs> think again. Pardon me? Okay, so. One simple trick to control. Oh, wait, something else. Cardio thoracic surgeon Stephen Gundry says he solved the weight loss mystery. All right. It really has the easiest way I think about what I do. Mute yourself. <laughs> you okay, everybody, can everybody hear me okay now? Yes. All right. I don't think I'll try that little piece of technology again. So if I send y'all a link before, just read it. <laughs> okay. So let me get back here then. All right. So, uh, so everybody saw the commercial now, right? All right. So the whole point was I, I, the, the, the company who was inferior uh, attacked the company who was superior. And what did they really, what was the whole point of that? I mean, why, why did I really show that? Why did I show that commercial? What, what was so point, what's the point of that whole commercial and how does that relate to us today? And what we're talking about? Just like the enemy, you're showing, getting the, uh, your target to feel fear, uncertainty and doubt. Uh-huh. Okay. That way, if they can start, because like, if you, if you're an enemy, and someone else is in a tall tower of refuge that you can't penetrate, the only thing you can get them to do is to doubt the strength of the tower's walls. And if they begin to doubt, they'll come out of the tower thinking that, you know, they're not safe there mm -hmm. into a position where they're truly not safe and then you can get them. Okay, that's, that's excellent. That's, per that's perfect. Anyone else? I, I like that. Excellent. Show you. Yeah, and, and so, and so how do you how do you guard against that then i mean and, and i say that uh I, I don't know how many people talk to you differently about uh they, what they believe and things like that but you know i had i had multiple, a couple of friends i know particularly and they would always try to introduce something that i didn't know but did you ever hear about the council of so and so and so and so or you should read this book by so and so i know i haven't read that book and i would always get these books to read and the whole point was to get me to share something that I didn't know. And they say, then you're supposed to say, well, like in the commercial, I wonder what else I don't know. And so to get you from where you are, like you can get you from a solid town, make you think that you don't have everything together. And true, I don't have all the knowledge. I have all the knowledge that I need to be saved. Yeah, and, and what is that? And, and that is the, the simplicity of the gospel. That, that's what it takes to be saved. So a lot of other stuff that they go, that people can add to that, of what happened in Egypt in, in, in BC 1400. I don't know, you know, uh, but I do know what it takes uh, for me to be saved. I do know what it takes to, to, to be a believer. And so that's what we got to stand on. And so the things that come along tangential to that, just like, okay, fine, you know, I give you that. I give you that whole knowledge, but I'm not going to go chase that with you. And as I said, that doesn't, how does that play into the whole big kingdom thing? It doesn't many times. And so the point here is that uh, when someone comes along with something else that's new, okay, fine, well, big deal, okay, fine. Uh, but I know what I believe, and we have to know what we believe. We have to know what we believe and stand there and, know, and don't move from where you are. Don't, 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 don't be led away with, as Peter says, the unlearned and unstable. We don't even know all scriptures. They don't know scriptures. And there's a lot of unlearned and unstable people out there. We see them all the time. And Pastor Darrell, I think Valerie had a comment. 
Okay, great. Uh -oh. You have the floor, Valor. <clears throat> Are you on mute? I, I don't hear anybody. Okay, I forgot to unmute myself. Okay. So I was in a conversation with a guy and he, uh, we were talking about God and the Bible. And he said, well, you know, there are some people that are not included in this Bible that are supposed, you know, that had a um, important role. And I, and he named some of the people. I said, I never heard of them. I said, but I do know that. And he was trying to explain why he doesn't really believe that God um, is real and why should he believe that he should go this way rather than some of the other religions or whatever. And I guess he had questions about that and he was going through something because he had lost his son son had been murdered and i said well you know i don't know i said but what i would recommend you do is get before god and ask him to reveal the truth to you because he will you know mm -hmm. and, and that right. would yeah and that would help with um with the doubt and, and everything and then I, I wanted to share this i had looked up doing a word study on grace uh -huh. Uh, I guess it's like a dictionary, word study dictionary. Uh -huh. It ind indicated that uh, when received by faith, for grace, Sh Charisse, I think that's how you say it, when received by faith transforms man and causes him to love and to seek after the righteousness of God. And, um, and then that grace remains constant and helps man to fight it, fight um against the devil and to fight in in the struggle with um struggle within himself against sin uh -huh. and god's grace ensures that those who have been truly regenerated will persevere until the end of life uh -huh. and uh just <clears throat> the main point in that is that this strength yeah. doesn't come from ourselves but it comes yeah. from uh, the grace given to us by the Holy Spirit. Hey Amen. That, that, that's beautiful. That's what and, and, yeah, <laughs> that's great. And when we get to and this verse, we can finish this verse nine uh, probably, you know, in, in probably two or three weeks, you know, when, from the time we started, if it wasn't for the word grace in there. Uh, because grace is there, we're going to <laughs> we have to be there for a while. And actually, uh, I was going to actually impose upon Pastor Bobby uh, to, uh, to, to talk about you know, grace, uh, when we, when we get to that part and that may be the lesson, because I think it's, it's such an important part of, you know, how we got to where we are and how we can be assured that we will reach, uh, our destination safely, uh, and, and purposefully and, and how we're going to live going forward. And, and I love the way he, he teaches about grace. So I want to make sure that we get as much meat off the bone as possible and not just define it the way I kind of defined it here. And there's so much more to it. Uh, and I know when I think about, about Paul, when Paul was teaching in um, about the gifts, he was talking about the gifts of God to put in church apostles and teachers and things like that. And he said, by the grace of God. And when he got to grace, when he mentioned by the grace of God, then there's a big parenthesis for like two or three verses, you know, uh, about, you know, who, how do you, he, how, he descended here at the first ascend. How did he ascend? This was first ascended to lower court. He started talking about the whole gospel all of a sudden because he mentioned the word grace. And then he went back to talking about and he put in the church, you know, the apostles and teachers and everything else. But he mentioned the word grace and just so funny. That I, I should turn to it, but it's so funny how he mentioned the word grace and he just went off <laughs> off subject and and started talking about the grace of God. Then he came back and and, and the writers put in parentheses because where did he go? And the whole point is he mentioned the word grace and he just had to go there. And so, uh, and I, I want to find that and look at that too. But, uh, but we get to word grace and we got to go there. We got to visit, you know, grace. And, and it's not just something thrown around. He said, this is how the heart is going to be established with grace. And, uh, and not with meats, he says. I mean, so I don't want get to get, get too far ahead, but it's going to be exciting the next few weeks. 
but we want to finish this first sentence, but, uh, and I think you, you're exactly uh, on point there, uh, Dr. Anderson, that that's where we got to go and uh, how, the, how the hearts can be established, you know, with grace. And, and so people that have things that are not in the Bible, and, I, and, and I've heard things like that before, and I have a bookcase, and I have a bookcase which is primarily just Bibles on it, on one shelf. And then the next shelf is a lot of, you know, books that I like to read. Yeah, I think are good books. And then there's other books about history, history and things like that, which are also good books, but they're not really biblically based books. I, but I like all those books. But it's amazing how the books I like are not really included in the Bible, you know, because that's not what, the only reason they're not in the Bible because God didn't want them in the Bible, you know. So <laughs> everything God wanted in the Bible is, is in the Bible. And so just because it's not in the Bible doesn't mean it's not true. It means that it just doesn't belong in the Bible. And no, I don't use it for salvation. You know, I go to my doctor and he pulls out a book he got books, none of them are in the Bible. And he tells himself, and I believe everything he says, but it's not in the Bible, you know, but I don't use that, what he says for salvation. I don't use that to be saved, but I use it for something else. So that may be some good stuff that people like, and it may be good for it. It may be true about weather. It just doesn't belong in the Bible, period. It doesn't, so, but things that belong in the Bible, it's in the Bible. Let's God put it and make sure it's in there. So that's a interesting point, but, you know, I could tell people, you know, everything doesn't belong there. The things that God wanted there, he made sure it was there. Uh, and that kind of gets to the main point here. Uh, and so the, uh, when, uh, when Dave was in high school, his, his principal at uh, David's school, and he was always talking to PTA meetings and every little function they had. And, and this teacher said, this principal said the same thing every time at the end uh, of all of his talks, no matter what it was about, uh, track meet, banquet or PTA meeting or whatever. He always said the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. Uh, and that's all he always said. That was his mantra all the time. It was a great principle. And and I thought and and this is a great principle too too. But the whole point is that we need to know what's important and, and stay focused on what's important here and not drift off the things that may be you know cool or fancy uh, uh, or chic or flavor of the month type of thing that Satan try to throws at us. Uh, any other questions or comments about that before we leave uh, um, verse 5? And this was actually basically a lot of review from last time. Uh -huh. All right. I'm going to slide 6. All right. So this is one that, um, uh, you know, everybody, people do things that they try to be impressed. And I'm not impressed by a lot of this stuff. Um, waterless car washes in my neighborhood. This waterless guy, waterless car wash guy, come by and wash his car. I live in Florida all the time, and I thought, I want water. You know, just wash it. You know, <laughs> just, just just clean. You know, and I eat it, uh, in this restaurant that flowers and brownies. I mean, so some people get all excited when they could do stuff. You know, look, no hands when you should be using your hand, uh, and so it's just the chic. You know, that's what people do. And we get to the Bible and they, they want to preach the word. I'm going to you know, preach and they don't even open the Bible. Okay. And, oh, wow. He preached the whole message. Didn't even open the Bible one time. Why, really? And so you can't be impressed with all this stuff. And then it's the gospel. Cross this gospel. Preach the gospel. It's different. So people come along with a whole lot of different things. Um, uh, there was a church I was visiting a while when I was in Texas. And they were, uh, all of a sudden the pastor was gone. I don't know what happened. Uh, to this day, I don't know what happened. But he was seem to be a great preacher, but they start marching through a lot of different, you know, I guess fashion shows to, to get the, the next pastor. And they came through and, um, and then they were, uh, I saw one of the deacons at the mall and, and I didn't ask him what happened. And I was saying, what, you know, I got a lot of good pastor here, but I said, you know, I listened to the pre preachers and this one was really, really good. And, uh, is he going to be the pre the pastor? And uh, the deacon was telling me, he said, well, the one we, we're trying to find somebody who's a, who has a, a social gospel. And I uh, thought so the one they got was a big civil rights guy uh, from Louisiana, but they said a social gospel. Okay. So uh, there's only one gospel. There's <laughs> only one gospel. And, and, and so you can't just start taking the gospel and changing it. So we see people taking the Bible and replacing it with books about the Bible and taking the gospel and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and turn it into something else. It's a wealth gospel. It's a health gospel. It's a social gospel. No, it's only one gospel. And that gospel 
That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Died on the cross for our sins, buried, rose again. That is the gospel. That, that's not another gospel. You see what Paul wrote in Galatians. He says, you, you, you're soon removed. Um, I marvel that you're soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. And then he says, which is not another. He says, it's not another gospel. There's no such thing as a social gospel, a civil rights gospel, a justice gospel. There's no such thing as that. It's just one gospel, and that is the gospel of the grace of Jesus Christ. That's, that's it. And so when you hear people saying, oh, this church has this kind of gospel, well, that should be an alarm. And you hear to say, I'm running check please leave the door leave the building run out the door with your hands up in the air scream if you need to but that's when you go because paul says but though we are an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you that which we have preached unto you let him be a curse and these people are not angels from heaven and if they preach in another gospel paul said let them let him be a curse so there is no other gospel we have the only gospel. So if they want to say this is that kind of gospel, I'm going to tell you like Paul, which is not another. And <clears throat> people talking about another Jesus. I mean, this is the Jesus, this is the kind of Jesus, this is the Jesus of this, this is Jesus of that. No, it's just, just one Jesus. The same Jesus died. Same Jesus died on the cross for our sins. That's the same Jesus. There's no, there's no Jesus. This Jesus Christ that we talked about in verse 8, the same yesterday, today, and forever. So people try to take one aspect about Jesus and say, this is the Jesus that we're following. This is the Jesus we preach. <clears throat> There's only one Jesus. And you see what Paul said, for if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, okay, so whom we have not preached, or we receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye may well bear with him. I mean, this is just bad news. Oh, look at it, because you, you, there is no other Jesus. And so the only Jesus we know is the same one they talked about that was preached in the book of Acts, Acts 2. And he said, this same Jesus, which one? The one that you've crucified is both Lord and Christ. So the only one we're going to talk about is this same Jesus. There's no, no other, there's no other way around it. And the, and the problem, as Paul points to in, in 2 Corinthians, he said there's a simplicity that is in Christ. It, 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 there's not a lot of moving parts. It's simple. He, he, he's the son of God. He died for our sins. He was buried and he rose again. That's just too simple. But that's the gospel message. It's the simplicity of Jesus Christ. So people make it complex with all this stuff about this and that and this year and that stuff and the, this king and that emperor and this council and this kind of stuff. Trying to make it all complex, a whole lot of moving parts to throw us off. But there's a simplicity in Jesus Christ. And that's what you have. And it's a solid, it's a steady thing. So with writer saying, don't be moved from your position. Be not carried away with all that stuff. Just don't do it. It's coming at you. Don't even entertain it. You already got what works. To give them what works in its simplest and purest form and move on and give someone else what works in its simplest and purest form as well. That's our job. Not to sit here and have a philosophical conversation with you. I, I think about when Paul uh, went to, uh, I think it was in Corinthians, when he said the Jews require a sign and the Greek desire wisdom. So you think Paul's coming to town. Pa Paul's an apostle, so he could do miracles. And he said, I got one group over here that want to see me do miracles, signs, the Jews. Then I got one group when I come to town wants wisdom, want me to have these philosophical and deep conversation with them about wisdom, which he can do because Paul's a very bright, brilliant man. So he said, I'm coming to town. I got this group wants me to do science. This group wants me to do some wisdom. He said, but what did I do? He says, but I preach Christ crucified. That's it. That's it. No, nope, I didn't do the signs. I didn't do the wisdom thing. I just did one thing. That is Christ crucified. That's our job. That's our job. We don't have to come with all other stuff for everybody else that, they, that make them like it. We just do one thing, and Paul could have made them all love it. I mean, if I'm running revival, I'm going to do the signs over here, make people come in, get in a thousand that line, talk wisdom over here, get these people come in. But what if you do Christ crucified? He ain't trying to do nothing else but just Christ crucified. And that's our job. And that's our message. So you got, uh, and I'm almost out of time, but let's just do a slide seven. Uh, we're almost getting the foot in the door here on chapter seven. Um, um, we're going to pick up right here in, at, at, at um, 
on slide seven uh, next week. Um, but look at this, and, and it's kind of like there's a lot of teachings out there. There's a lot of teachings going on, and, and your job is to know that what you're eating is the right thing and not follow all these diverse and strange doctrines. There's a whole bunch of them out there. And uh, I have a good friend, and I have this little picture at the bottom, <laughs> and I have a good friend that I visit sometimes in another state, and I go to church with them sometime, uh, but he and his wife go to different churches. And invariably, uh, I would go with him, and it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's basically just straight up Bible, no singing, no nothing, just straight Bible. But his wife's church is more, and he would call it, okay, Daryl, you want to go to the cake and ice cream service, or do you want to go to real church? And his wife is really mad about it because he goes to both uh, sometimes. But, uh, and it's just, but it is cake and ice cream. Uh, I will say, you know, I'd say, you know it's cake and ice cream, but I ain't mad about cake and ice cream. But that's exactly what they're serving at this one church. And, and there's other church he goes to is strictly read the Bible. I mean, they actually use the Bible and teach them the Bible, you know, clearly. And the other one is talking about a whole lot of neat stuff. So there, there's cake and ice cream. And this, this uh, a friend sent me this a long time ago when I was a, uh, uh, <laughs> I have a big team, and I always like making people happy. And they, they sent me this. This is not the exact one, but same words. And they said, uh, "You, if you want to make everyone happy, don't be a leader. Go sell ice cream." Because I wanted everybody on my team to be happy. And what they were telling me is, I wasn't a great leader because all I was doing was making people happy. And you can't make people happy. And and I would take and use the same thing for you know teachers today. Uh, if you're trying to make everybody happy, go sell ice cream. But when you teach the word of God, everyone's not going to be happy. And, and we can't be happy. I, I hear, if I got happy and was happy about every message I heard Pastor Bobby, you know, preach or teach, I, I wouldn't be getting the right thing. Some of it makes me mad. Some of it makes me, I got to go do better. I got to go do this. You should, if someone's teaching the word of God, you should not be happy every time you hear it. You got to say, I got to tighten up. I got to do better. I got to, I got to, I got to grow deeper. I, I got to grow high. I mean, whatever it is, you got to feel challenged and it's not something to be happy about, but, but you're glad you're happy. You heard it. And so we got to get to the real Bible teaching and it challenges sometimes and, and, and it calls something higher in a loftier place. And so that's, that's the, the, the power of true Bible, true biblical teaching. So we go to the strange stuff and it's new stuff just to make us feel good, we're wandering off the reservation at this point. So uh, think about that. And, and what I want to come to next Sunday is I want to finish up uh, this slide, slide seven, because Timothy talks about these people and how uh, some of us, you know, uh, in, in a large degree, we all are teachers to some degree because we've all been taught. But we got to know what we're talking and what we're saying to people. At the same time, we're all learning and we're gravitating to, gravitating to certain places and certain people where we get our learning. So where do we go for that? And so we want to start, pick up at um, this slide, slide seven. Uh, the, we're still talking about strange doctrines and really want to talk about you know, where they come from, how to point them out, and uh, how to point people out, and what to do about it. And we'll, we'll start that next Sunday. And so uh, this slide, I uh, entitled it, Eat This, Not That. Uh, we're going to be able to point out good food, bad food, and you still got a choice what to eat. What are you gonna eat? All right, and, and the writer just saying, look, I'm trying to teach you how to run your race to win. <laughs> and, and that's all we're talking about. You're running your race, you're on solid ground, you gotta win, you gotta win. So don't fall prey to anything else to come along because Satan's trying to get you to get out, get off, get off the track, get out of your lane, disqualify yourself. He can't stop you. He can't stop you. Only you can stop him yourself or, or hinder yourself and that's what the writer's talking about so we'll pick it up next time next sunday as well any other questions or comments before we turn it back over to uh uh to minister harper i just wanted to say something real quick um like like uh sister valerie um same thing kind of happened to me um mm -hmm. my cousin she randomly texted me like a couple months ago and she wanted me to get on this zoom call um, about some holy cubic church or something like that. And so I'm like, what is that, you know? And so she's like, well, um, you'll just have to get on the call because I can't really, I'm like, what's your belief? 
And she's like, that's a broad question. You can't even tell me what you believe. Like, I'm not about to get on a call so somebody could try to tell me what I believe isn't true. And, um, and so also, like, not trying to judge, but, like, your life should mirror what you believe in. And mm-hmm. so, like, the life that she lives, I'm not trying to judge, really, but why would I want to like believe in something that you believe in because obviously you do whatever you want you know but um so like uncle bobby said the other day on christ the solid rock i stand around is sinking sand you know i know the truth and like and and like cj preached while back on men's sunday you know i've seen evidence Mm -hmm. of god's Mm -hmm. working and moving so you're not about to tell me what i believe to be true Amen. Like the proof is in the pudding. So I don't, I don't know what she was trying to get me to do, mm-hmm. but I was not getting on that Zoom call because was no. I, I'm not about to argue with nobody. Hey man, uh, so, hey, that's um, right. Probably. That's right. Yeah, I'm just like, eh, no, not doing it. <laughs> so mm-hmm. thank you, Uncle Daryl. Thank you, Oak City, because like, yeah, I just love my church, y'all. Like, are uh, really Bible teaching yeah. pastors, and 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 like you actually live it. You know, like. There's so many pastors out here that's really just doing whatever and, you know, like leading their mm. congregation astray. But you all are true men of God and uh, true leaders. And I just thank God for y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. 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 That's the right approach. Amen. Amen. Nicole today, and you do not have the lesson from uh, this Sunday, uh, please uh, put your email in the chat and I'll send you the lesson. Uh, we're gonna pick up a slide seven the next Sunday, hopefully. What was the significance of Paul saying that made him both Lord and Christ? Christ refers to his messianic role mm-hmm. uh, because the Jews were expecting the Messiah. So the word Christ means anointed. anointed mm-hmm. So the, the Jews were expecting a Messiah, but they did not know this Messiah would be God in the flesh. And mm-hmm. what Paul was explaining to him, Peter was explaining to him, is that not only is your Messiah the one that you thought, but he is God in the flesh, Lord and Christ. He's not only Messiah, but he is Lord. All right. Okay. And it's another proof of the divinity of Christ. Okay. He was God in the flesh. In him was the fullness of Godhead bodily. Nothing like the name Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Amen. All right. Uh, anybody want to well, we'll just close, Father, in Jesus' name. We just thank you for your people. Well, I want somebody else to close in prayer. I really do. <laughs> I look at time. I want somebody else to close in prayer. I'm, I'm going to back up. Somebody somebody else close in prayer. If you, if you have a word, you can say it, but close in prayer. We'll be all right. We'll start it. We're cutting our time short, but somebody else close in prayer. I will. Thank you. Let us bow. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for what our ears have heard. We thank you, Lord, that your word is preached and taught here. We thank you, Lord, for the goodness that you have allowed us to see. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who died on the cross, but more importantly, he rose and declared all power in heaven and earth in his hands. And for that, we are grateful. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless each and every one on this call. Bless their families, friends, loved ones, even their enemies, Lord. Just bless all. In Jesus' name, we pray. We thank you. We love you lord amen amen man all right see y'all in a few minutes i got just some time give me a cup of coffee